All right, welcome back, Chaotically Intolerant, episode 180, I think. Um, it has probably been the longest week of my life. Uh, those of you, or longest week in a long time, those of you who do know, um, we are in Sarasota, or who don't know. We're in Sarasota, Florida, so we just got hit by uh, Hurricane Milton pretty bad. I'm okay. I'm still at my aunt's. Uh, we just have no power. Um, some businesses got hit pretty hard. Areas got hit pretty hard here, but I think Sarasota actually did quite well. Uh, in comparison, FPL working their ass off to uh, get power back to everyone. Um, so I want to thank them for that. Um, <clears throat> but the NFL doesn't stop. The NFL world doesn't stop. Content doesn't stop. Um, if you paid attention, we did lose, you know, our, we didn't have any content coming out for a couple of days. Um, but, you know, I, I worked my ass off to get some videos out. And uh, we did get out the episode on Friday, but this one should be on time. So, we're going to talk NFL. We're going to talk uh, just everything that happened. Devontae Adams, Monday Night Football, Thursday Night Football. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let's go. All right, Mike. So. Let's open up with the big news of the day. Um, Devontae Adams is headed to the Jets. I think he was at Monday Night Football last night. He was there, um, was not playing, and he probably had like a sleepover with Aaron Rodgers. He appeared on the uh, McAfee show today. The Jets are still the Jets, man. I They can't convince me any other way. It, it, you can get Superman on your team, and because they're green, Kryptonite's going to affect him, and he's going to turn human. Um, so Devontae Adams doesn't scare me. That's all I really have to say. They're, they're still the fucking Jets. It, it just feels like, yes, you said it perfectly. I couldn't have said that part any better. And I, you just think about what the Jets need. I mean, obviously they need like a home organization and culture shift. But in terms of players, I think a move that's less flashy, you know, getting offensive line help, maybe getting an impact defensive player, uh, maybe getting a new kicker after last night. Who knows? I, I just feel like it just adds more cooks to the kitchen at this point. You got Rodgers. He's calling the shots. I want to bring Alan Lazard here. Now I want to bring Devontae Adams. It's just, it's just not working. The fact that the Jets cannot win the AFC East in a post-Tom Brady world is that I feel like sums it up for me. Because it should be, it was like, oh my God, we could we could never win the East because Brady was there. He's gone now. You've got, uh, you got a. He may not be playing like at a future Hall of Fame quarterback, and it's as dysfunctional as ever. I I don't. I mean, I think they'll put up some nice numbers. They'll share some good memories and laughs. But I don't see this turning the Jets into a a real threat in the AFC. I mean, you you already have Hassan Reddick, who has just been approved to seek a trade. Um, I mean, that that is like a big piece you could have adding to that front line and you just can't get him in the building. I mean, what what's going on here? Like, why can't you get this guy in the building? He is a could be a big piece and maybe could help push them over the edge. Obviously, you probably still need to add a few more pieces, but this is just the Jets. I mean, I, I saw I saw the crazy conspiracy theory today and we're not going to talk about it. But um, someone said that Rodgers is actually uh, sabotaging the Jets because Woody Johnson owns Johnson and Johnson or or was the yeah. the heir to Johnson and Johnson is that what it is he owns Johnson and Johnson and they had the vaccine that Aaron doesn't like um I will say Aaron has been immunized to 300 yard passing games um since 2021 yes. correct yeah yeah um, I that. <laughs> so uh, I guess we get I mean that's a good spot to talk about Monday Night Football too um I mean this this is a Bills team that I don't think they look like the past Bills they they are still on that um, kind of rebuild, semi-rebuild, but they did go and get Amari Cooper to add uh, to Allen's weapons. Um, but Monday Night Football, I mean, neither team, I don't think the Bills looked unbeatable. They they haven't looked unbeatable the past three weeks. That started, obviously, with that Sunday Night Football loss to the Big Bad Ravens. Um, but how are, how are the Jets not taking advantage of this time where there's you have a Miami team who – Clearly, Tua is worth the contract that he's getting paid because they can't find anything else. They can't do anything. And this was also the bye week for them. Um, you have a Patriots team who, with a young quarterback, they are awful. You have the Bills who are in this semi-rebuild, and now you still can't win the division because Aaron Rodgers is just – I don't even know. Like, I, it's, I still don't think there's an excuse. If Rodgers – yeah, Rodgers is struggling. He doesn't look like the quarterback of old. But we've been hearing about how good this team is that's surrounding him 
for the last year and a half, two years, and they still can't get it done. They're two and four. I mean, what are we do? What are we doing here? Right. Um, but the Bills, I do want to focus on the Bills a little bit. They they added uh, Amari Cooper today. Um, is it time for Bass to be gone? I mean, he had one of the worst extra points I've ever seen. That that might be a contender for the worst extra point attempt that I've ever seen. And, you know, <laughs> I mean, you got to add a kicker. Kickers are important, right? Uh, who who? What else can you add to this Buffalo team right now? Um, well... Uh, again, new culture. <laughs> I mean, they what are they four and two now? Uh, They're four and two, but it it just doesn't right. It doesn't feel like it. But yeah. again, in that division, you don't need a lot in terms of adding to the team. I think they could always use more defensive help. It seems like they have been pummeled by injuries more than anyone over the last few years. I felt like last year, going into that Chiefs playoff game, I think if they were fully healthy defensively, I think they win that game because they. They did as much as they could ball control offense wise, but they had a couple of really key guys out. They they always seem to be so banged up defensively, um, and that's obviously hurt them in you know in terms of stacking up with the, the top teams, i.e. the Chiefs in the AFC. I, I you know there's a few names that have been floated as pass rush help. Um, the Lions are obviously interested in the wake of yeah. big injury, Aiden Hutchinson, and. Um, you know, so there could be a couple names. I've heard Max Crosby, although not likely, Miles Garrett, maybe Hassan Reddick. I don't know. There's just interdivision trade feels yeah, really it feels unlikely. But right now, yeah, you know, they're they're again. And football is like, you know, it's you're trading picks. You're not even trading prospects in baseball who have put up tangible numbers. You're just trading, you know, the unknown basically. Like, yeah, you, you yeah. don't like giving up first round picks, but if you have a guy that you really feel like can get you to the next level when the window's open, I say, go for it. Easy for me to say I'm not a GM with lots of money on the line, but that would be my feeling. I mean, could, I, I feel like we could have the same success as a GM with, with the Jets, like compared oh, to what they've done in the last yeah. few years. I think I could do that. Yes. I could, I could go out and get Aaron Rodgers for however much and add all of his buddies. I, I could, I could be Aaron Rodgers' puppet basically. That's, that's my level of, of understanding as a GM. Um, and then Mike Williams. I, th- I Well, there's there's two things about Monday Night Football. Mike Williams seemed to be the catalyst after that. In Like he got hurt, slipped on the field. I mean, it's obviously it, it was MetLife, so it makes sense that he slipped. Um, but then he drops it. Like I think that was the major catalyst to say, okay, we really need a, a wide receiver. We need right. another guy. Because, I mean, is, is Garrett Wilson – living up to what Jets fans expected. I'm I'm not sure. Um I don't I think they expected a I think they expected Devontae Adams and you're not getting Devontae Adams out of Garrett Wilson right now. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean uh numbers have been good last couple of games breakout yeah. for Wilson, but first few games not as overwhelming. So we'll see though. I mean you know, we we could be totally wrong. A few weeks the Jets offense could be lighting it up and we come back and say sorry. <laughs> We're wrong. We know. sound like idiots. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing, the NFL and the penalties, there was a record penalty yardage last night. I think it was 202 penalty yards in total in the game. And it was just, I mean, it was every other play. Stop, stop, stop. Like it, it felt like I was watching penalties with a side of football is, is the best way I could describe it. Uh, yeah. I just, well, I don't know how much, how many of those penalties were, quote unquote controversial, but um it's uh <laughs> it's not good when we're talking about that. It's not good for the quality of play. Again, I mean I think like it well this was a Monday night game, not a Thursday night game. But I think with the increase of Thursday night games, the increase of, of games and travel, I just I can't help but think that it does have an effect on the quality of play. You know, as yeah. much as and but the NFL doesn't care because people will watch. They can just grow the game, grow the schedule, grow the global scale. You know they're talking about maybe sixteen international games a year now. Um, I mean, Goodell just said the international Super Bowl is. Yeah, that's a possibility. He thinks it's a very real possibility, which is disgust to me. That is absolutely disgusting. If oh. Roger Goodell does that, the league, the owners should have a vote. The players should go on strike. And say, no, you have done enough to this league. You have added Thursday Night Football. You have added a 17th game. You have done X, Y, Z. We draw the line at an, at an international Super Bowl. It's, that's ridiculous. The Super Bowl is literally America. Like, that is the perfect 
that is the perfect American thing. You can't take that out of here. It is a crazy two weeks of media, of of excess. It is just all, I think, the definition of excess. It is literally called the Super Bowl. It is the excess Super Bowl um, or excess bowl, I guess. Um, it is perfectly American. You can't bring it to Europe. They just wouldn't get it. No, no way. I mean, I, I just feel lucky <laughs> that I got to grow up in a time, you know, in the last five, 10 years in particular, there's so many things that have changed for the worse, in my opinion, in the game. So I'm, I'm just thankful I got those early formative years where I got to yeah. still see a lot of the things that I grew up loving about football. So that, that would be a shame if Goodell yeah. does that. Um, let's jump to the Thursday night game. 49ers, Seahawks, the Niners. I, I think they kind of helped their case a little bit. They have suddenly, like, I think before this game, we were talking, oh, my God, if, if the Niners lose, you know, what what are we going to do? Purdy's not the guy type of thing. And they win this one pretty handily. Um, there was an issue with the replay. I don't know if you saw that play. I actually was able to watch the last quarter live. My internet finally started loading. Um, we do. We have an issue with replays um, in the NFL. Uh, there was a clear ball bounce, hits the Seattle player's hand, and 49ers recovered. For some reason, they just gave the ball back to Seattle. They said, you know what, that doesn't matter. I don't know how they didn't get a good angle at it. They said we didn't have a good angle, even though the national audience had the perfect angle to show the ball bounced off uh, the returner's fingers. Um, this is just, it's its another thing. It is another issue with uh, refereeing in the NFL. And I don't know what they can do about it. I mean, it, do you want them to sit in front of the media and say, you know, have to answer media questions because I think that would end up getting into their heads. I'm, I'm really not sure how to fix yeah, this instead issue. Of talking to pool reporters, I don't know. Replays sucked in baseball too. It seems like yeah. you're missing calls that are, I, I, I don't know what they can do. I mean, I think overall replays benefited the game, but they're still, in a lot of ways it's worse because if you get a call potentially wrong or if there's still controversy, controversy after looking you're probably better off just saying it was human error in the first place that's why i don't want robot umps in baseball yeah i don't know i don't know what they can do i think um the game itself is is um things coming back to the middle to the regressing to the mean if you will uh seattle back to earth at three and three 49ers coming up to three and three with the chiefs game in advance worst part about this game was they had to show a guy getting sick on the sideline it could have done without that you Probably should be glad you missed that. It was uh, Lavishka Chenault. I don't know how you pronounce his name. Uh, but uh, yeah, 49 again, the NFC West is one of those divisions you don't have to be that good to win. The 49ers have the luxury of figuring some things out here. Yeah. Uh, Purdy, 18 for 28, 255 yards, uh, three touchdowns. No he was efficient. And, and I think that's all you really had to ask him for. No turnovers. That, that's really just the big thing with him. A don't turn balance. the ball over. Great balance running attack, 33 to 28, uh, almost seven yards a carry. They committed to the ground game. That's always going to make your quarterback's numbers look better. Yeah. Um, let's go to the London game Sunday morning. Caleb Williams, so it's four touchdowns. Um, now, I know it wasn't quite as sexy just because the yardage was pretty low or low-ish, 226. Um, but when a rookie quarterback throws four touchdowns in his sixth career game, there's a reason to be excited. I, I don't care about yardage. Six to, or four touchdowns in his sixth career game is pretty damn good, I would say. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, the things are looking up big time for the Bears right now. I mean, I thought the Jaguars, maybe they were only a one-point underdog just because they have played in London so much, but I kind of couldn't believe it. Bears felt like a great bet to me. Yeah, Williams is, he's not making the stem and he threw the one pick. They're running it now. DeAndre Swift, that's looking like a better and better move every day. Um, he also had four catches for 28 yards. Defense playing great, and I think Doug Peterson is going to be on his way out. Yeah, I don't know where the Jags go here because this is supposed to be the greatest Jags team ever put out there. Their owner put that out. Mm -hmm. um, and, I mean, they have just been awful. They've been they, – they are one of the worst teams in football – and I mean, you look at this, look at the roster. I mean, it's not, this isn't like a crazy good roster, but it's also not a bad roster by any means. Trevor Lawrence, obviously, former number one pick. Um, you have Travis Etienne Jr., who I don't know what happened with him. Did he get hurt? He had one, he had three carries for negative one yards. Um, and then you have Evan Ingram, Gabe Davis, Christian Kirk, Ryan Thomas Jr., who is a dog. 
Um, I mean, these aren't like awful players. This is not a one in five team by any means. And I think they, they're probably going to be looking for some on their defense to come back. Um, I know I've heard they've been pretty banged up. Um, yeah. Uh, ETN but, hamstring injury week to week. Uh, but um, after the, after they play the Patriots also in London, presumably um, schedule is, is very tough uh, for the Jaguars, Packers, Eagles, Vikings, Lions, Texans, are the following five games. I think it's going to get a lot uglier um, for them, honestly, because if they're, if they're struggling against even the mediocre teams, I, I can't see them turning it around. Uh, so. The only, the only way I can justify Doug Peterson not being fired at this point, because what you're, you're giving up 35 points to a bears team with a rookie quarterback in London of all things. Like you mm -hmm. should not be doing that in London. The only re the only justification is we don't want to fire a midseason because we don't want instability. That's it. They're they have to have informed him. Hey, we're gonna fire you at the end of the year. Like I mean, you come in. Lot, yeah, yeah. I mean that's that's the only reason I can justify it. Um, because they are just this is an uninspired football team. I mean, I said if they lost to the Colts last week, you fire him immediately. You you start Owen Owen five. Um. And their kicker saved Doug Peterson's ass. That's the only reason he still has a job right now. Um, they could have been 0 6 very easily, but uh, yeah, the Jacks are so bad. It is so funny. Um, Colts, Titans, Joe Flacco. This was not, um, I, I would say this would probably be closer to Joe's playoff game against, uh, against Houston last year. Um, he didn't look great. He wasn't awesome. Um, he had a few throws that weren't interceptions but they were pretty damn close to interceptions um his pass to michael pittman jr that was picked just sailed i i didn't even know where it was going at first um but the colts just find a way because will levis was awful he was so bad 18 for 27 95 yards couldn't even get the triple digits i mean tennessee like i think i expected them to be a little better but a lot of the world didn't really expect much out of them so one and four isn't a surprise um and the colts Hey, they're three and three, you know, um, they were eight, eight and nine last year. Now they're three and three. So they're kind of following the same trend, I think. Yeah. Just find a way to win. Flacco knows how to do it. They, you know, Sermon didn't run well, but Goodson did balances it out. And I don't know where the Titans go from here. I mean, they really stink. It's, <laughs> it's a shame. There's just nothing. I mean, I don't even think they should have expected it. I mean, the, the only question is, are you still riding with Will Levis? Um, but you would think, hey, if we suck this year, we'll get a top pick. Um, I don't know what the quarterback class looks like. I think it's only Ewers, right? Like, that's it, coming out of college. Um, ma major quarterback. Maybe Shadur, I guess. But uh, there, I don't think there's any, like, real standout standouts. Um, so you could even roll with him next year. You take a take a good piece in the draft, high in the draft, take a good uh, building piece. And then um, if Levis looks good next year, you roll with him. And if he doesn't, then – kick him out the door and bring in the new guy. Um, Texans, Pats, not much to say here. The Texans are good and the Patriots aren't. Drake May threw three touchdowns. Good for him. Um, yeah, rookie quarterback's debut well, actually wasn't that bad, but the defense was that bad. And now yeah. Houston's starting to get – they're starting to find it a little bit. You know, they they were kind of like 4-1 team that was like, oh, but they're good, but they're not really – winning convincingly and they got hammered by the Vikings and then, okay, here, this is the game you're supposed to win. And they did it. They're running the ball. Stroud, not huge numbers, but not really making the mistakes. Um, they're balancing it out in terms of spreading the wealth around Diggs and Dell. Um, sounds like a good law firm. It's uh, yeah. Texans are uh, taking that division, uh, you know, getting a stranglehold on it slowly, but surely. Yeah. Um, Colts are two games back at the mm -hmm. moment. And the Colts are actually in a playoff spot, shockingly enough. Right. Um, Commanders Ravens, the big game of the week. What's what's the rivalry called? It's it's like the Beltway. Battle of the, Battle of the Beltway, yeah. Battle of the Beltway. Yeah. Yeah, it was a was a fun game to be at. Uh the the offenses were both going. You know, Lamar had an early pick and then and then got it going. And man, Derrick Henry's a difference maker for the Ravens defense doesn't really know how to put teams away. But Derrick Henry does. And to me, that's what they're going to have to do to protect leads because their secondary was, you know, I thought the pass rush did a good job in terms of getting home against Jaden Daniels. They, they forced him into some mistakes. They did a good job 
couple times there in the red zone. Uh, but the Ravens had to really salt this game away with the run game and finally got big breakout game from Zay Flowers. You're kind of waiting for that one. So, uh, you know, they, they got the job done. They got the job done. They picked up three sacks. So slowly getting more and more encouraged each week. They've won four in a row. And com- I give the commanders credit because this was a game that they really were supposed to lose. They were supposed to come down to earth. And for a while, it looked like it, uh, them for a while, but there was a point where it looked like it'd get out of hand. But Terry, scary Terry, he kept them in the game too. Uh, a couple touchdown catches, um, but too much Derrick Henry. That was a difference. Yeah, Derrick Henry, um, I think he's like the big winner from this week at least. Just yeah. he, everyone passed up on him. I mean, he was an afterthought, including me. I, I said he was going to really take a dive. I think you kind of agreed with me. Um, but he is still just like that little engine that could just – doesn't stop. Um, Browns Eagles, both teams lost this game. I think, mm. uh, although the score indicates different, both teams lost this game. The Browns have scored two offensive touchdowns in the last twelve quarters of football played. Um, where do you go from here? I mean, I think we ask this question every single week. Deshaun Watt, the, the the Brown, they're just bad. They're just a bad football team. Who would have thought Deshaun Watson would be this bad? I mean, you can't even claim the rust thing anymore I don't think that's even fair like he's played enough games now to shake the rust off and Philly the the offense looked more alive with AJ Brown but I think that was kind of what was expected um and the Eagles just kind of claw their way like this wasn't really a fun game to watch they claw their way to three and two um Nick Sirianni also shaved his head he's going he, he's going Britney Spears <laughs> he yelled at the fans too and yeah. I think the Browns are going to they're going to have to bench Watson at this point. I mean, now with, with Cooper out, it's not going to get any better trading him. And yeah, the Eagles are very underwhelming. It doesn't feel like they're a three and two football team, but they did run the ball 36 times and Hertz didn't make any mistakes. He had efficient numbers. So maybe not as bad on Philly's side as it was as bad on Cleveland's side, but I, I just, I don't know how this team can feel inspired week in and week out to play for Deshaun Watson. So I I feel like they have to make a change. They just have to. I would swallow your pride. You already wasted all that money on him. I think everyone knows it at this point. I mean, you're one in five now. At the end of the year, like, I know there's so much money out there. Do you just cut the guy and and hope with a quarterback in the draft? Um, I mean, you trade away as many pieces as you possibly can, cut them, and you know, draft a quarterback and pray. I mean, I think that's the best course of action at this point. This is a just you, you already look at what Baker Mayfield is doing in, in Tampa. This is just embarrassing and an absolute embarrassment, I think, for, for Cleveland. But you can also say that for Philly, too. I mean, Philly was in the Super Bowl two years ago. They were 10 and one. Right. Just just last year. And now Nick Sirianni is shaving his head, screaming at the fans yeah. and they are three and two. Somehow, somehow they're three and two. I don't even know how they're three and two. Packers, Cardinals, not much to say here. Packers look back. Um, the offense looks really good. Uh, once, once Jordan Love can institute the uh, play action as well when he gets more mobile and heals up more, um, the Packers going to be really, really good. Yeah, I would just point out for the Packers, they are a very quiet four and two in what has yeah. now become football's best division. And I think that's the way they like it. I think there were actually a lot of expectations on them coming into the year and we might be talking about them a lot more, but then Love's injury and now Caleb Williams and the and the Vikings are doing well and as well and and Detroit's Detroit's you know so it's kind of like the Packers are final and a little under the radar, but uh, now they're playing really good football. The NFC North, um, every single team is at like at least two games over five hundred. Yeah. So it's not just oh, there's a crappy team sitting in there that's won a few easy games at the beginning of the year to get to you know just get one game over five hundred. No. Right. Every single team has been, I mean, these are, you could make a case for every single team to go on some sort of deep playoff run here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, oh, the, the Packers. even the Vikings, <laughs> shockingly enough, even sure. the Vikings, I mean, some, you know, they have the best record right now. They may not feel like the best team, but they do have the best record in the division through what, six weeks, seven weeks, wherever we are. So yeah. I feel like, you know, you, you gotta be, every team feels like they have a chance. Bucks hang a 50 burger on the Saints. Spencer Radler gets to start. Um, just the Bucks are really good. That's it. 
Well, this things turned for the Saints in a real hurry. They they looked really great for two weeks, albeit yeah. it was Carolina and Dallas. But uh, but how about third? I just like the thirty five carries for two hundred and seventy seven yards for the Buck. It seems like there's a new like now. It's Sean Tucker, it was Bucky Irving, it was Rashad White. It's like they, they they're like the '90s Broncos teams plugging in these running backs, and they're all doing well. And, Baker had the three turnovers, but he also threw the four touchdowns. They're a fun team, man. It seems like every Bucks yeah. game has been they they you know shades of like 2019 Jameis Winston when he had the first 30 30 season. I don't know if Baker's going to get that, but like both teams being in the game every time the Bucks are playing, I, I you could argue that they've been the most exciting team in football this year. This I'll, I'll say this Bucks team is a lot more fun to watch than the Brady Bucks. Oh yeah, I think they're a lot more fun because it's it's not Tom Brady and the Avengers stepping out there. It's right. Baker, a, a, redeem, a redeemed Baker Mayfield stepping out there with, you know, somewhat older guys out there, some young guys, like you're mixing it up. It's not just throwing the Avengers out there, the super team, like, you know, the, the 2013 Miami Heat. It's They're not fun to root for. This Bucks team is very fun to root for. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad to see Baker's doing good. I don't think you can find a single person, single football fan that says they're unhappy Baker's doing well. Um, Chargers, Broncos, Jim Harbaugh, glad he's okay. Yeah. Um, I, in the nicest way possible, I thought it was hilarious that Jim Harbaugh goes to the tent during a game just because that's like Jim Harbaugh. That's a Jim Harbaugh thing. I thought he just got hurt. I thought he was like hitting, he was like doing his thing with Justin Herbert and he like hit his finger wrong. Um, but again, I am glad to hear he's okay. Of course, that's always serious. Um, but he is 2-0 and in uh, arrhythmias is what he said. So. Mm. Yeah. Speaking of like teams that you don't think are their record, how are the Chargers three and two? But they are three and two. So, and they won. Um, I know a couple of division games. I probably feel like they could have beat the Chiefs. And um, Herbert didn't make any mistakes. They ran. I mean, Denver came back to earth a little bit. I uh, think the Chargers just again like another one of those teams flying under the radar a little bit, which is probably how they like I it. I, I don't want to um, rain on the Chargers parade, but the Chargering did not end this week. Um, they gave up 16 fourth quarter points yeah, after they were up 23 nothing. So as I, don't, I just don't want to be fooled. I don't want anyone to be fooled um, that the Chargers are still the Chargers. And although they yeah. won, they almost gave up. They, they almost lost a game where they were up 23 nothing to with 10 minutes to go, yeah. basically 10 minutes to go in the fourth. No, I, I know, I know. But still, I think if you told any Charger fan, regardless of the schedule, that they'd be 3-2 and two after five games, they'd still take it. Yeah, and I do think, I think Broncos fans as well, that you yeah. tell them you're going to be 3-3 three and three after six, six games. Yeah. You're in games. They're not fun because they're not offensive games, but right. you're still in these games. Um, Steelers, Raiders, Justin Fields is not expected to start this week, um, but he gets 30, hangs 32 on the Raiders. Um how again? I think I said this last week, but just how quickly of a rise and fall that this Raiders team has had is insane. Yeah, I, I don't know where they go either. I mean, now they trade Devontae Adams, which was already in the in the works. Um, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe they get him out of the out of the clubhouse and a little better mojo. But I, I just just can't see this team making any kind of noise with Aiden O'Connell. I don't know why Fields wouldn't keep getting opportunities. He he ran for two touchdowns. He he didn't make any mistakes. Didn't turn the ball over. Right. I mean, yeah. he fumbled, but they he didn't lose it. So I just I don't know. I mean, the Steelers are four and two, and they're not generating a ton of offense. They're winning games with defense. It's not pretty, but Tomlin gonna Tomlin. He's gonna get wins yeah. out of this team regardless. I mean, at the end of the day, Justin Fields has gone four and two with this team. Yeah. I. Could not I could not see how you go away from him. I yeah, really and he's not messing up. I mean, he's yeah. he's doing what he needs to do. Uh, yeah, yeah. Lions Cowboys. Um, this one, no reason to even put your eyes on this game. Uh, Lions destroyed Dallas, uh, forty-seven to nine. They did lose Aiden O'Con or uh, Aiden Hutchinson. Gruesome, gruesome injury. I'm um, glad to hear he's doing okay th through surgery. Um. I, I did look up the the clip of it. It is a hard watch. It's bad, yeah. And it's, it's what is with shame. Dallas? What is with Dallas and that injury? That the same thing happened to Dak. It it really stinks that it happened in a thirty four to six game. That that to oh, me yeah, was what really stood out. That why I mean I know twenty eight maybe in a crazy scenario you blow it, but 
these guys shouldn't be out there. I don't know why teams are, are not quicker to pull their guys out of the game. That's just Dan well, Campbell. Yeah, right. <laughs> and Lions just did whatever the heck they wanted offensively. It's great, but I think this Hutchinson injury, unless they can get a really big-name guy to fill that void, that's going to really hurt them. Hassan Reddick is right there. And and he's not in the he's not even in the same conference. So they got to get as him. much of a hurt. They absolutely yeah. do. Their window is right now. This offense is that good. Um, they believe they can win the Super Bowl this year, but they need somebody to replace that production. Yeah. Falcons, Panthers. Um, this game was close for most of it until just the Falcons kind of instilled their instilled their will um, in this game. Uh, although I did have the Falcons defense in my fantasy team and they slid at like the three yard line on a pick six, which just <laughs> killed me. Absolutely killed me. I won in my game, so it really didn't matter. Um, but I was like screaming, oh my God, oh my God. And then obviously yelling, what the fuck are you doing? But um, yeah. You know what I'm noticing in all these box scores? We're seeing a lot of teams not only committing to the run, but splitting up carries. Falcons did it with Algier getting 18, Robinson 15. They were, they both combined for an even 200 yards. Um, yeah. Cousins efficient. Falcons have won three straight division games, which is not just, oh, you've won three in a row, but they've won three in a row within the NFC South after that deflating loss to the Chiefs. Um, good vibes right now. You know, and then like Dalton, not horrible, but again, you know, you're not going to really not. I just say the Panthers should be thankful that they have a win under their belt already because I'm not yeah. sure when the next one's going to be. Yeah, yeah. Maybe New Orleans with Spencer Rattler. Maybe. Um, Bengals, Giants. Yeah. This one is not convincing for me at all. Um, for the Bengals, yuck, gross. Joe Burrow turned on the gas, though. Yeah. Uh, first drive. And yeah. I think that's when we thought, oh, okay, they're back. Like, they're they're back. They're yeah. going to kick the shit out of the Giants as they should kick the shit out of the Giants. And it was a game. It was a close game. Um, oh, yeah, the Bengals okay. are not back, though. No, but 13 first downs. I mean, they almost matched the Giants in yards, but um, it was like after the Burrow run, they did absolutely nothing. And maybe that maybe that's why they were so excited to score that last touchdown, because I thought if they broke one, uh, the guy was just going to go down because – I think the Giants were out of timeouts or they, yeah, I think they were, they had one left, but the Bengals would have just kneeled, but he scored. That made some people happy in Vegas, I'm sure. But you're right. The Bengals are not back. The Giants were severely undermanned. Um, I think they, they missed a couple of field goals too, didn't they? Which, which could have made it a different game. Um, yeah, the they Giants, yeah, they missed, missed two, two so, field goals in the second half. Yeah. So, you know, and, I mean, Jones, he, he, the one pick, I don't know. I don't know what to make of this game, but you're right. That's my takeaway is the Bengals won a game they had to win, but it does not mean that those, you know, your older brother's Bengals are back. Not just yet. Not yet anyway. Yeah. Uh, this game was also just horrible because after the Daniel Jones interception in the first half, I think they ran a combined 33 plays hmm. for like the rest of the half combined. So just gross game. The most – the most plays a drive had was seven um, yeah. and it resulted in punts both times. So gross. Um, let's go into our game picks. Um, and then we're going to get out of here again. This is a quicker one. Um, we're going to start Thursday night football Broncos saints, uh, Sean Payton, revenge, revenge game. Um, who do you got here? Going Broncos quick turnaround bounce back. Sean Payton wants this one. Give me Denver. Yeah, I'm going Denver too. This is this is one uh, he's gonna. If if he was Mike McCarthy, he would smash a watermelon um, in the locker room for this one. Uh, London game, Pat's Jaguars, Mac Jones revenge game. Yeah, maybe we'll see a, an appearance of Mac Jones. Um, who do you got here? Jags got to win one of those two London games. Um, this is the maybe their last chance to win for a while. I'm begrudgingly taking Jacksonville. I'm. I feel like New England's got to win one. They they won that early game against the Bengals. I'm feeling a Patriots gross, ugly win. I feel like Doug Peterson, they're going to leave him on the tarmac. Uh, <laughs> um, just like Lane Kiffin. Uh, I'm, I'm going the Pats here. Jacksonville, five and a half point favorites too. That scares me. That really scares me. That feels like a trap. So inflated. Um, yeah. Uh, Colts, Dolphins here. Um Richardson will be starting uh, that they did give him the go ahead. Um, I mean, I, I can't not pick the Colts here. E even it is the dolphins. Like it's just, it's so hard for me to pick the Colts because I know how we are. Um, 
And this feels like a game Tyler Huntley's going to carve us up, but I will begrudgingly, begrudgingly pick the Colts at home. Yeah, um, I mean, it's it's hard to pick a Dolphins team without Tua. Uh, I'll begrudgingly take the Colts, too. Yeah. Again, this is very begrudgingly. I have no faith. No faith yeah. in our ability He's to do anything. Miami I, winning this game, but yeah. Especially at home. Oh, my God. It feels like a – it just feels like the fans are going to be booing. Um, Titans, Bills in Buffalo. Buffalo. Got to bounce back. I mean, I say bounce back, but like have a big performance against a team yeah. that they should slaughter. I, I think that eight and a half point spread is pretty big. I would consider taking Tennessee plus eight and a half, but Buffalo will lock this down. I'm yeah. I'm convinced. Um, Texans at or yeah, Texans at Packers. Ooh, really good game. Um, yeah. I think the Packers will get it done. They're playing well. Love's coming to life. I don't know. I still haven't been that convinced. By Houston at five and one. I know they blew out New England. They won won the games they've supposed they were supposed to, but I don't know. They didn't look good the last time they played it an NFC North team Viking. So I'm going to take Green Bay. Um, I think the I think the Texans have to lose one. And, you know, besides the one they lost to Minnesota, um, they're five and one. They've been on a little bit of a roll. I feel like they're just not good enough yet to go on that really long winning streak. Um, maintaining a really long winning streak. So I'll roll with the Packers. Uh, Eagles, Giants, this one is going to be awful. Hard to size this one up. It depends how healthy the Giants are. I can see them pulling the upset, but if they have the same amount of injuries going into that game, I would take Philly. Yeah, I, I guess I'll take Philly. Uh, you know you know what? I'm going to go with the Giants. I don't know why. I'm just going with the Giants. I feel like this is the game like Philly completely turns on Sirianni. This is the one. I think they, they lost that one last year, correct? In – New York. Yeah, they got hammered the last game of the year, yeah. Um, Lions, Vikings, this is another big one. A big test, I think, for both teams. I I want to pick the Vikings just because I know know they like want to show that this is the game. I'm actually gonna take the Vikings. I don't know why. I feel like conventional wisdom is to take the Lions, but I'm gonna say I may change my mind on this though. Because the Lions were humming last week, but that almost is why you know look, they didn't face a, an inspired Brian Flores led defense. We'll see, and we'll see how they respond with the Hutchinson injury, how that affects their defense. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna believe in the Lions here. Mm-hmm. I think this is a big game for them on the road. You know, I think there still is a lot of proving to do for this Lions team. Um, they're not, they aren't proven whatsoever. You know, you lose the NFC title game to the 49ers in that fashion. Um, and then they haven't, I mean, they've, they've looked good. They, they look good last week, of course. Um, but sometimes blowouts just happen. Teams come out flat. I think they still have a lot of proving to do. Um, I'll, I'll go with the lions here too. Um, Seahawks Falcons. I feel like I need to take one upset somewhere in here. Um, but I don't know. Atlanta's been playing so hot. I'm going to go Atlanta. I'm going Kirk too. Uh, Seattle has looked uninspired. Yeah, they started three and zero, and now they're on a three game losing streak. Feels long like things ride. are just they have had a tumbling. few extra days, but long playing. Ride. Yeah, uh, Bengals Browns big divisional matchup. I think Joe Burrow always struggles in Cleveland. Is that correct? He does. Yeah, I'm gonna still take the Bengals. It's like so hard. It, I th- I think, I mean, if the Bengals lose this game, Zach Taylor's fired. Right. Like, I think that's probably because he's already been his seats boiling. Um, this Browns team is horrible. I think there's gonna be a lot of urgency from the Bengals. They want to get to 500. Once you get to four and four, you, you can kind of maybe take a little bit of a breath. So I'm going to go uh, Cincy here as well. I think he's going to break the curse. Panthers, commies. Oh, man. Give me the commies. Keep it rolling. I don't know why that seven and a half point spread. Big spreads just make me nervous, especially when it comes to Andy Dalton. I think they're going to keep this one a little close, especially it's a young team, young quarterback. Um, but give me the commanders. Raiders, Rams. Yeah, the old L.A. Uh, bowl. Um, both teams once there. I'm going to go with Rams. They, they can't be one in five, can they? They're not coming off a bye. I think they're going to get it done. Yeah, the Raiders are just, I mean, that place is a mess. It is a mess. It is actually the perfect example of Las Vegas. Um, you can... You can be as high as possible, and the very next week you're low. You're uh, as low as possible. Um, and I think that low is going to continue. Um, although that, that Ram Stadium is going to be filled with silver and black. Oh, yeah. I know that. Uh, Chiefs, 49ers, the big game of Sunday. 
Um, are they getting anyone back? Are the 49ers getting anyone big back? I know McCaffrey is obviously out indefinitely. Um, I don't know, but I actually – well, I'm never going to. I'm never going to pick against the Chiefs until they lose a game. So officially I'm taking the Chiefs. Um, but the 49ers have had a little extra time. You know they're going to have some juice for this game. But, like, yeah. the Chiefs defense is just suffocating. So And Andy Reid off a of bye almost never loses. Remember that. That's true. San Fran, they're also one-and-a-half-point favorites. So I know they're at home. Oh, the Chiefs that is an feels, Oof, all day. Yeah. I'm going Kansas City as well. Um, I do think the Niners are going to fight, though. I think they will put up a fight. They're going to look better. I think they're going to put a lot of confidence into other people. Um, Jets, Steelers, God, Lord help me. I don't want to watch this game. But you know I will, Roger. Roger has me me by the throat. He's he's literally just holding me hostage with a knife saying, you're going to watch this on Peacock, and you're going to like it. Um, I don't know why, but I almost feel like the Jets are a good pick in this game because everyone assumes that they won't win back-to-back primetime games. And if Fields isn't starting, I don't know. I, I, the Steelers make all the sense in the world. That's why I'm just for no reason picking the Jets. Well, that was kind of my reasoning for picking the Jets on Monday night. I was like, they have an interim head coach now, which uh, I, 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 we didn't know that it was going to be an interim at the time. I don't think, right? We didn't know that. On Tuesday, he wasn't fired. I can't remember. Um, anyways, I was like, you know what? They're going to come out. They're going to punch uh, Buffalo in the mouth, and they're going to find their groove. I just don't know anymore. This Jets team is completely uninspired. I feel like, it's again, it's Mike Tomlin. It's weird to pick against Mike Tomlin, um, so I'm going Steelers as well. Two Monday night games, again. Why, do, why are we doing this? And a 9 o'clock Monday night game as well. What the fuck is going on over there? Um, Ravens, Bucks, big matchup. I really like this matchup. This is going to be a fun one. Really is. Yeah, it's tough. I, I worry about the Ravens defense. I mean, just uh, get against the Bucks team that just hung 51. But at the same time, teams that score 50 points, usually the next week have a letdown. Um, every part of my logical brain wants to pick the Bucks, so I'm going to pick the Ravens. <laughs> um, I'm looking at the records, four and two. This one's a coin flip to me. Honestly, Baltimore, they're three and a half point road favorites. That's a lot. It is a lot. That really feels yeah, that like a lot. Me. Um, I'm going to go with the Bucks. That uh, that just feels like a lot. Although I, yeah, I want to see the Ravens win, but I also I want to see both teams win here. Um, can't have that happen. Chargers Cardinals. Uh, why is this game even happening? There's no reason for this game to be on Monday night. Even before the season, there was no reason to put this one on Monday night football. But now we have to be tortured with two. Yeah, some some key guys questionable for the Chargers, uh, but Marvin Harrison questionable for the Cardinals. I would say I'll, if as long as Harrison plays, I like the Cardinals. Chargers don't feel like a four and two team to me, but if Harrison doesn't play, uh, that might change my picking a little bit. The Chargers feel like the exact team that will lose to a frisky frisky yeah. Cardinals. Like yeah. any frisky team, they're gonna lose. They right. you can count them out. They have no frisk um, themselves. Yeah, <laughs> no no frisk. Uh, yeah, no frisk. Um, I'll, I'll go the Cardinals as well. Um, let's let's do like two minutes on baseball because it is the championship series. Um, we did not. I don't think we got our predictions right whatsoever. I know we have to get out of here, but uh, just give me give me a little bit on baseball. The Mets are exciting. I mean, they are not the Mets. This is not the typical Mets. They they are not your typical Mets. They really responded nicely after that 9-0 drubbing. I mean, the Dodgers pitching, I mean, I think for all the heat that they took to throw 33 straight, straight scoreless innings and tie the 1966 yeah. Orioles, pretty incredible. Um, but that three straight days now that they're playing, which is, which is the first time we've seen it this postseason, that – will show, you know, a lot about how both managers are going to use their bullpens. Um, the leverage arms of the Dodgers are definitely better than those of the Mets, but the Mets have the edge in starting pitching. Both of these teams are really, really good at scoring with two outs, at responding to adversity. This, we say this a lot when two good teams play, but this truly feels like a series that's going six or seven because the Mets don't want this ride to end, but L.A. is just so damn talented. I mean, this has all the makings of like a full seven. The Mets have been the anti-Mets since the beginning. Um, they lose that that game two against the Brewers, and you think, okay, like this is they're going to lose. This is what the Mets do. They they give you a little bit of hope, and then they take it away. They beat the Brewers on I think it was Alonzo's ninth inning yeah. home run, right? Yeah. He had a home run in the ninth um, on the road as well, and then they the Phillies lead the game off or lead the offense off or 
bottom of the first with a uh, Schwarber home run. And you think momentum, they can't stop the momentum. The Phillies are so good. Phillies don't show up. They lose in five. Now they get killed in game one. And it's like, okay, they have to lose this one now. Like they're going to get their asses kicked. That you can't lose nine nothing to open the series and then come out and win. And they win game two, seven three. I mean, these are not these are not your dad's Mets. They are not. And, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll just close by saying this: both teams have have uh, been pushed to the edge, which always makes a team dangerous when they escape death. Mets yeah. did it with that crazy ninth inning comeback against the Brewers in Game Three. Dodgers were pushed to the brink by a team that had their number and responded with thirty three straight shutout innings. Um, yeah. Both of these teams know how to get up from a punch, which is why this series is going to be fascinating right down to the end. Yeah. Who are you picking for each one? Still taking the Dodgers in seven, but it's go- it probably is going the distance. I, I thought at first, man, eh, first game had me thinking four or five. Um, I still think L.A. is going to find a way uh, just because, you know, Otani, Betts, those guys can wake up at any moment, and the Mets bullpen scares the daylights out of me. Um, I would take the Yankees on the other side. The Guardians look over – they look overmatched. I'm not even sure how they're here. I felt like Detroit would have given a better fight because they could throw a lot of different arms. Um, they had a lot of fight. A.J. Hinch knows how to manage a game, manage a bullpen. Uh, in Cleveland, I mean, I don't know. They they just they've been overusing their bullpen. They don't have a ton of offense. Ramirez hasn't hit this postseason. The Yankees, to me, they're like the they're like the mid two thousand Steelers, where they're they're going to get there because of who they don't have to play, rather than who yeah. they, well and who they are playing. Obviously, Kansas City and Cleveland. I mean, even A Rod said it on the set of the Fox Show. They this is as easy a path to a World Series as you're ever going to get, and I don't see the Yankees squandering that. Okay. Well, um, it's the Yankees. I, I'm going to pick against them because I hate the Yankees. Of course, I'm sure. wearing the P. Um, I'm picking, I'm picking the guards. Um, and, uh, fuck it. I'll pick the Mets. Give me a Guardians Mets that would World be great. Series. Starts tonight weird. for the Guardians. They, they get that's a weird. Yeah. That's a weird World Series, Guardians. The Mets. Lindor, um, the Lindor Bowl. That's what it would be. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, that would be, that would be crazy. That would be, fun. um, although a Subway Series World Series part two would also be equally as just insane. Um, well, and I think and especially, the winner, yeah, the winner of that NL series to me feels like the clear favorite in the world series. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. Thank you all for watching. I think we're going to do, we're going to try and do like a half and half um, world series preview next week. Cause I think we'll know by then uh, who's mm-hmm. in the world series. We'll do a world series preview and NFL week seven. You can't, Can't let NFL go by the wayside. Um, Make sure to check out all of our game previews or uh, game recaps. People are loving those on our socials. Um, Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you on Wednesday.